The men over here have something we call the African spirituality. And I like to dwell on that because when you come to Ghana, 25 million to 27 million people, most people are Christianized today. People have been allowed themselves to be brainwashed, believing that everything black, everything Africa is evil. No, I don't want to be a Christian, and I know why I am not a Christian. I see Christianity as a kind of spiritual enslavement. That Jesus Christ was born through spirit. How can there is no spirituality but rather exploitation? People have become lazy and spend all the time in church, and their life does not improve a bit. Defining the African faith. I have been driving around Ghana, talking to different people, talking to different religious leaders on the African faith. Who are we as black people? Black Empire news coming out of Ghana, out of Africa, international. Zo TV. <music> We're trying to define the fate of black people around the world. So this is Black Empire News. You comment, you subscribe, and you tell us what you think. Who are we and what is our identity? I am reporting live from Ghana in a small little town in the middle of Eastern region called Wenchi, defining the African fate. Defining the African faith. I am still on my episode and I'm heading to the University of Ghana now. I'm going to go interview, you know, a diaspora. And if you've been watching my show before, I did an episode on a man called Obadale Kambo. This man is also believed to be somebody quite powerful in understanding the origin of the black man, the spiritual systems of the black man. Right to the world, you know, it's been quite challenging for us getting to this part of the world where we are now. Still in Accra though, you know what I mean? We are in a place called Hacho. And um, still on the topic, defining the African faith. And I've been speaking to Osofua Aji and I've been speaking to Nana Sufi, but today on a different level. And as I said earlier on, I'm speaking to an African, diaspora African, immigrated back to Africa. He got a different thing to say and he has been studying and studying and studying and studying and studying. Defining the African faith, you know what I'm talking about. Why? Because the modern Africa is not connected to its own roots. It looks to me like we are hanging in the sky. And that's why I'm here today talking about defining the African faith. My man is in the house, he's gonna mention his own name. Papa. Right. So I'm Dr. Obadele uh, Kamban. Yes. As you mentioned, African anti-American yeah. uh, repatriated here to the continent Madeline. and also uh, yeah. initiated into the Akan system. Mm -hmm. Uh, Akropon as an Osofo, okay. the traditional one, not the church one. Yeah, the traditional one, not the, the church one. one. Did you hear that? Osofo, traditional one, but not the church one. Right. Uh -huh. And then also, uh, I received the right hand of Ifa, and then also Ishu, that's in the Yoruba okay. uh, tradition as well. Yes. Yeah, so. Oh, so, so when we when, so when somebody say Dr. Obadale Kambon, mm -hmm. if I may ask, like, what is your faith? Is your Christian faith or... Um, a, a, a Buddhist faith or Muslim faith, Islamic faith, even though you've told me that you know, you've been initiated, mm. it would be good for the audiences to actually yeah. hear direct what yeah. is your faith. Yeah, so I'm an African, Yes. right? 
So when we understand that, we understand that our system, our understanding of the Creator is part of a way of life. Okay. So it's all encompassing. Okay. So this is what we were doing before uh, the Europeans came, yeah. before the uh, Arabs came, before yeah. all of these, you know, folks yeah. came with yeah. their faiths. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, but when you walk around Ghana today, mm -hmm. not only Ghana, but the entire African continent mm -hmm. and somewhere other world in the diasporan world like say Brazil and other places mm -hmm. you see that most black people are geared towards more of the Christian faith and the Islamic faith than the African indigenous belief system. Mm -hmm. why, why, why is it so? Right. I think that if we want to understand why we are where we are yeah. then we have to understand yes. what we're doing. Yeah. So when we look at you know all over the place the worse our conditions are the more we are into yeah. these european we're worshiping the gods of our you know enemies yeah. essentially yeah so one of the things is that when we look at our own african spirituality yes. you look at times where we defeated europeans we were using african spirituality okay. to do that so you yeah. look at haiti yes i was actually just looking at a documentary on that yeah. where you had all these different types of african people who were coming together yes and so so in in, mm -hmm. in you you're using this reference using haiti yeah. as yeah. a reference for exactly. this yeah all right exactly so you had all of them coming together using Vodun, using African spirituality, yeah. and defeating Europeans. You can look yeah. all the way to ancient Kemet, yeah. where you had Africans. If you read, there's a text called the Autobiography of Winnie, yeah. another one called uh, Harkouf. Okay. So when you read those, they're saying they're bringing together all these different types of yeah. black people. So yeah. Kemet itself means land of the black people. All right. And they're coming together with the... Uh, you Kemet know, the ordinary people. man on the street probably don't understand Kemet because yeah. when we went to school we never taught what yeah. Kemet was. Yeah. You know, just for the purposes of my viewership, yeah. you know, wh where is Kemet as we speak of today? Right. So when we're talking about Kemet, we're talking about what is now uh, the countries of Egypt and okay. Northern Sudan. Yeah. Right. Okay. So here when we're seeing Kemet, we're saying Kemet itself was the indigenous name for Egypt. Okay. So Egypt is coming from Hut Ka Pata, which means the enclosure yeah. of the soul of yeah. Pata, which was a deity. Yeah. Aegyptos. Yeah. That's the Greek rendering. Yeah. The indigenous name mm. the, of the people themselves was land yeah. of black people. Yeah. And they referred to themselves also as black people. Yeah. Right? So that's very profound in the sense that they're coming together with all types of different yeah. black people. All right. So they're saying, okay, we're bringing together the Irjet Nubians, mm. the Wawat Nubians, yeah. the Sejer Nubians, okay. all of these Nubians, yeah. both sides are uh, yeah. upper and lower Kemet yeah. in order to fight off these Asiatics. Okay. So they're so using their own I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interjecting, but mm -hmm. if I want, if I, if I want to understand this, I always hear the popular saying that you know civilization started in Africa. You know, Africa is the cradle of civilization. It becomes a jargon that almost everybody uses without not really mm -hmm. understanding what that uh, that is about. Mm -hmm. You know, the archaeologists will say that you know the first humans were found in East Africa or mm -hmm. was found in. You know, they they always bring mm -hmm. something up that shows that man, the origination of man, mm -hmm. was in Africa. Mm -hmm. Just for the purpose of my audiences again, you know. When we say Kemet now, in respect to coming back to defining the African faith, when we say Kemet, do we want to say that, is that where the civilization started from? Well, if, if in your, yeah, in your yeah. knowledge, yeah. If we want to go or to the Or was there people of anything, Kemet, anything before Kemet? Right. If you want to look at what the people of Kemet themselves say, they say that civilization and that the ancestors came from further into the south, further into the interior. Mm -hmm. There's a text called the Famine Stella. The what? The famine stella. The famine stella. And right. the background of it was that there was a seven year famine. Okay. And you know, Kemet depended on Hapi, that was the Nile River, that was the indigenous name of the Nile River. Okay. So the Nile wasn't flooding. Yeah. You know, every year they would depend on the inundation that would bring you know, the silt coming from the mountains in Ethiopia, Uganda, right. all the way down. And then when the flood comes, yeah. it overruns the land, mm. it, you know, deposits all the silt, yeah. makes the soil fertile, yeah, and it yeah. goes back. So it wasn't flooding, and there was therefore a famine. They weren't able to feed the population, mm. so they wanted to find out, you know, what can we do, yeah. you know, about this famine. And they sent Imhotep, 
who was the world's first multi-genius. Okay. They sent him to the source of the Nile in order to find out what's going on. All right. So he went down to the south to the place where, you know, all of this was happening, where it was coming from, mm -hmm. and found what they called it the Twin Caverns. Now okay. this is referring to the place where the White Nile and the Blue Nile meet. Okay. So we're talking around... The Twin what? What's the name? The Twin... The Twin Caverns. The Twin, okay. twin Caverns. Okay. So that's okay. referring to the White Nile. Yeah, the White and Nile and the Blue Nile. Nile. And that's around Khartoum, which is, you know, where they're coming together. Okay. So in this, they're saying they had to go to, you know, this place of the Twin Caverns, a place from which the ancestors had come. Yeah. They realized that there's uh, a small island. I actually got a chance to see this when I was in Kemet last month. Okay. There was a small island, which is the place of the Temple of Kanum. The Temple of Kenu. Of Kenu. Right, which oh, was right. a creator deity. Okay. Who was seen like a potter, the one who, you know, molds the bodies. You'll find similar concepts amongst the Yoruba or Batala. Okay. And so forth and so on. Yeah. So, 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 so I mean, you know, where we are now, yeah. you, you've you seen a lot of connection between the, the how do you call it, um, this, the, the indigenous system of today's mm. West Africa, mm. I would say, because I haven't been to East Africa before, mm. but what I would say of the, the voodoo system, the Ifa system, mm. You see a connection between this one and the ancient system in yeah. Kemet. Yeah. Keep watching Zou TV. It's number one. Okay. Uh, and this is actually in 2012-2013. Um, this uh, organization called DNA Tribes. Yeah. They actually did genetic studies on the mummies of the ancient rulers who were called Nesu mm -hmm. in ancient Kemet, which we know as pharaohs. Yeah. The word pharaoh actually comes from per a, a which translates to great house. Yes. Per being house and A'a being great. Yeah. And it would basically say in the White House says or yeah. Downing Street says or whatever. All right. But the actual title was Nesu. So, you know, for that, they actually, you know, did these DNA tests and found that the closest genetic matches of these ancient rulers of Kemet were found in South, uh, South Africa, Southern Africa, mm -hmm. found in East Africa, in the Great Lakes region, okay. and then also found in West Africa. Okay. After that, they found that they were in the Sahel region. All right. After that, they found that they were in the Horn of Africa. Okay. They went through all the different parts of Africa. Africa, Africa yeah. Before it comes to North Africa, that's the invaders who are there now. Yes. So you keep going down, down, down. Every type of African who we know as African. Okay. Before you come to, you know, these ones. Before yeah. you go to the Levant, that's now talking about the so-called Middle East. Yeah. And it just keeps going down, and then it gets minuscule, you know, very little relation. All right. So this is genetic tests okay. that are actually confirming what scholars like Sehanta Job and Theophil Obinga have been saying for years. Okay. That these, you know, are African people, the same people that you look around All right. and see. So you see it, you yeah. know, in you know, the images, how they carve themselves, the yeah. language, how they refer to themselves as yeah. black people. Yeah. But now genetics are saying the exact same thing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So if I may ask, like, you know, some of us in Ghana here we were born into the masses mm -hmm. religion. Mm -hmm. When I say the masses religion, at the time I was born, it was a Christian religion. Mm -hmm. So we go to school, mm -hmm. you either you have to be either maybe Methodist or Catholic or Presbyterian mm -hmm. or you know. So you already sort of been ordained mm -hmm. into the Christian mindset already. But from your background for you to be able to get all this, you know, um, strength and studies and get into mm -hmm. this indigenous belief system, what 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 was your 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 first faith? Mm -hmm. What faith have you been to? Other series of faith mm -hmm. before you got to where you are now, or you were initiated right into the indigenous belief system? Initiated right into the indigenous one. So. Yes. This is the thing, and this is why it's important for continental Africans and diaspora Africans to connect. Yes. My mother first came to Ghana in 1972. Yes. I was born in 79. Yes. Um, she started her initiation into the indigenous African spiritual systems in the mid-90s somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I was still in my teens. Yes. Um, she brought me to Ghana in 98. Yes. So I've never been... I went to a church one time, mm -hmm. and it was ironically when my parents came to Africa, they went to Kenya, to Kemet, yeah. to Egypt for your viewers, yeah. and um, they left me with my aunt. I won't say anything <laughs> about my aunt, but that one Sunday, it, it went over a Sunday, so I went to that church, and I was sitting there the whole time like, 
you are supposed to be adults. Why are you so irresponsible worshiping this, you know, imaginary white boy, right? Yeah. That was my one time ever going to church. I would like to say I've never been there, okay. but that was my one time. Yeah. So I've never been in Christianity, never been in any, what I like to call Eurasian worship yeah. systems. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Yosef Benyakinen says religion is a deification of a culture. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you are from a culture that's in the desert, mm -hmm. then you'll find that part of the religion is saying you take a little bit of water and rub here, you take a little... Yeah. Because they're in a place with no water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they basically deified mm -hmm. lack of water. Yeah. But why does that make sense? We're, we're, we're in Ghana where it's flooding every day. Yeah. <laughs> but they've just elevated being in a desert to like this is now the holy process that you have to go through. Yeah. So these are things that we often don't even think about logically. Yeah. When you look at Eurasians, yeah. when they decided to, you know, change the image mm -hmm. of the original Holy Trinity yeah. to the one that you all know now, yeah. you know, that was just an arbitrary decision. Pope yeah. Alexander the mm -hmm. amongst others, yeah. you know, saying, you know, let's make them look like us. All so right. now they've just elevated themselves yeah. and yeah. said, why, why are we worshiping black people? Yeah. But even to this day, if you go all throughout Europe, you'll find all of these images of the black madonna that's the mary mm -hmm. and the black child yeah which was yeah. you know originally heru yeah but now it comes to us as a jesus so okay yeah. okay so you know you know how how a lot of a lot of people will argue you know and say you know what they say not argue per se but they say most religion that has been practiced in today's modern world mm -hmm. which is the christian religions the, the buddhists the, the islam they all came out of the indigenous belief system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I do. This is the thing. When you look at, you know, this example I gave you of how they changed yeah. the image to a white one. Yeah. If you look at Buddhism, right? Yeah. If you look at the oldest depictions of the Buddha, you will see him as black and he has his hair and what they call Bantu knots. Okay. Just like this, but it's twisted into yeah. a small knot like mm -hmm. this. So those are the oldest images. But now, if you look at more recent, you know, images over the past, you know, several hundred years, mm -hmm. if you go to Thailand, Buddha looks Thai. Yes, Buddha looks Thai. China, yeah. Buddha looks Chinese. Ch Chinese if yeah. you're in India, yeah. Buddha looks like the Aryan invader yeah. of Indians, yeah. uh, the Hindu. Yeah. If you, you know, go to Japan, yeah. you'll look Japanese, anywhere you go. Yeah. So, this is one thing to keep in mind, even though it did, you know, originally come from us. Yeah. Think about how... They didn't preserve the yeah. sanctity of the image. Okay. So, by the same token, how would you expect them to have preserved the sanctity right. of the content, the mm -hmm. spiritual system itself? Yeah. So, they made revisions to make it fit them. You understand? So, this is why I always tell people we have to look at the source. Yes. We have to go to ancient Kemet. We have to read the source text. Yes. Otherwise, yeah. we're depending yeah. on... So, so, so with you, for all black people around the world now, people that either in Africa or wherever it mm -hmm. is and that have black, you know, descendants, mm -hmm. you will say that our, the, the source of our spirituality is in, is, is in, is in Kemet. I would say look at the Nile Valley. I wouldn't, Nile Valley. I wouldn't only... Say, so Kemet okay. is the child yeah. of further into the south according to the Africans and Kemet themselves. All right. right? Yeah. So I would say look at the Nile Valley. Okay. I would say Kemet was probably the most flourishing yes. you know, out of them and that's why we oftentimes talk yeah, about talk it. Talk about Kemet. Yeah. But when you read the actual text of what the people in Kemet themselves say, yeah. Yeah. they say, you know, let's go down to the south. And yeah. this is... One of the major things about mm -hmm. Kemet is they have an orientation where they refer to the south as upper yeah. Kemet. Yeah. And they refer to the north as lower Kemet. Okay. They refer to the east as the left. Yeah. They refer to the west as the right. Yeah. So all of this means that their orientation, yeah. they're facing. So yeah. the east is on my left, so yeah. picture Somalia. Mm -hmm. The west is on my right, picture Dakar, Senegal. Okay. Therefore, my face yeah. is towards my origin, the place that I came from. All right. This is upper, this is lower. Lower. So basically, the map that we look at is turned upside down. Yeah. yeah. So originally, this was the orientation. Okay. So, so the map is outside down. Right. Okay. And <laughs> when you think about what having your back towards something means in African culture, yeah. it means that this is something insignificant. So yeah. even when we say michi, michi. in Yoruba, we say, can you see? Can like you I'm see? putting my back but, towards something. Yes. It's seen as, you know, there's nothing there. What am I? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. looking at the, yeah. the place where I'm coming from is where I'm facing. Yeah. So again, if you look at everything about Kemet, yeah. they're telling you go to the actual yeah. source. source. Yeah. Defining the African faith 
Zo TV out of Ghana, out of Africa, is international. You know, keep watching it. This is a subject of discussion for all the black people around the world. We're trying to find the identity of the black man and the black woman.